Good morning here with Websites for Beginners. Yes, it's a good morning here. Still very, very early. I'm one of those early risers. The dogs have been fed, the cats have been fed, there's a cat on my lap and the coffee is next to me. Very important. In our tutorial this morning, we look at one of the latest elements by Croco Block for the Jet Elements add-on for Elementor called a drop bar. And this is one of those cases where initially I had my reservations about this widget. I really couldn't get my head around it. And then after I posted on the Facebook community, I got some ideas and then I played around with it. And then the more I thought about it, the more ideas I started getting. So let me share a little bit of those ideas with you. And then also the most important part is show you what the drop bar widget from CrocoBlock can do. I have loaded a pre-made page here a services page, yeah, well, it looks like a restaurant, services, private celebrations, wedding services, birthday parties, and then over here is reservation. What I want to do next is I want to give people the opportunity to see the times when our restaurant is open, but I don't want to mess around with how this page looks. Maybe I feel the page is already too big. Maybe I, I just want to save some space, or maybe I feel that adding those, those information from when the store will be opened does not fit the style of my website. And that is one of the possibilities where you can use the drop bar. You will find the drop bar if you go to the Elementor editor on the left, all the way down for Jet Elements, and then you get it over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it just below the reservations. And now, before we start looking at the functionality of the drop bar, I just want this button to fit in. One of the features that you can find within Elementor is the copy and paste styles. It is, I would say, they still need some work done for it. And I think one of the reasons why it isn't that effective at all times is because you are working with a third party add on. If you look at other page builders who have implemented it, they keep most everything in house. So the copy and paste style work perfectly across all their modules and widgets. But you will see what I mean here. What I want to do is this is a normal button. If I click on it, you'll see it says button and this one says drop bar. So if I click on the button and I right click on it and I'm going to say copy, then I'm going to click on the drop bar, right click, and I'm going to say paste style. You will see now that it will become bigger and that it will change maybe the font, but nothing else much has changed. I know that it has copied the style because if you go to reservation, you go under style and you look at the border radius 40, uh, uh, at the padding 17, 51, 18, 15, 1, you will see that if we go to the drop bar and we go to style, you will see the same padding has been applied but it did not do anything for the border radius nor the color. So those are things that we are going to try and do by ourselves. So the border radius at 40, 40, 40, but you see it just doesn't look the same. It does look taller. The height does look a few more pixels than this one. And that could be to other spacing elements within this widget, but I'm going to leave it there. It's good enough for me. Now I just want to style it even more. I want to first put it in the center for that you go to content and then you align it to the middle. Next, let's go and change the colors under style. And then for our text color, or let's go for the background type first. I want to make it white. I want to make it the reverse of this button. And then I want to use that red color. So I'm going to go and grab my Chrome color picker eyedropper and hover over it, click on it, copy it with Control C or Command C, and then close out here. Now, go back here, go to my background, click on it, and no, 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 I have to go to my text. Where am I now? Text color, and now I undid everything. Let's paste the text color first, go back to background type, and there we go, keep the white. Now, for the hover, I just want to do the opposite. So I'm going to go to hover, background type, color, 
Am I under background type color? I'm getting confused here from drastically. Okay, paste, let's see. Yes, okay, got it. Phew, I can breathe again. And then here is the text color. Things start to swim around. Right, so now it is the opposite. The purpose, as I said earlier, of this drop bar button is going to be to keep my opening hours. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's go back to content. And under content, you will see here content, then you will see simple text, and then simple text where I can add my simple text. I've already written this in Microsoft Word, so I'm going to just go ahead and paste it. You can have a look. We can extend this here. Monday it is closed. Tuesday is from 4 o'clock to 10 o'clock and so forth. The problem with the simple text editor is it does not apply line breaks. So if I go and hover over the drop bar, you will see everything is next to each other. So we go and do the old school of entering. Well, not old school, but you know, the old way we did page building. You have to enter the line break with the command for line break. That takes me back years and years still working in DOS anyway and then copy it for all of them and now after you've added those breaks and it has updated here you will see it displays very nicely let's go have a look then just for our own reference how it will look if we preview it for real and I'm going to exit my full view go down there you see you can make a reservation. Oh, we didn't change the text for this one. I'm going to change that now. But when you hover over it, look how nice it is. It's maybe information that you don't want to leave here all the time. And it's also a nice way of getting people to interact with your website. This is one of the ideas that I thought, okay, yeah, I can see the value in this. Hover over it and people can see it. Let's just go back and under the text here, say opening hours. You can add icons if you want to. All right, and then you can have one before, you can even have after. I am not going to add an icon in that position. And then, of course, you saw me align it earlier. And there, with justification, you can stretch it across the whole element section. Let's keep it for that. Settings. Now, here comes the next part. As you can see now, currently, that our drop bar opens at the bottom, and you can choose where it has to open. You can have it to the right center and update, and where else you can have it to the top center, and let's say top, where is top bottom? Isn't there a top bottom, or is it a bottom Bottom center. Okay, so that one will be bottom center, the one we had it on originally. The thing that you have to keep in mind will again be responsive mode. Go to mobile and just have a look at where it displays. If you see it displays okay like this, do not go and put it on something like left top. Let's see, maybe it still does it okay. Yes, you do not want it on left top. And you can see that Croco Block has given you the option to give different areas for leaving the position in the various responsiveness. So definitely go and check the mobile after you have done this. And you want to leave it, in my opinion, at bottom center or top center, center top. Uh, yeah, I know it gets confusing. Then a very interesting feature as well, and that is maybe one that you could be using a lot depending on what you're trying to portray on your website is this one called a fixed layout. Now the fixed layout is going to place it somewhere on your site fixed. So the moment I activate it, observe what happens with this button. It's going to jump up here to the top left. And now you see it will remain there fixed. Now it is very important that you do set the position accordingly to how it appears here in the fixed position. And this will be a bottom right. No, bottom left, bottom left. And you can also change the position of that. For example, here, the fixed position can be here at the bottom center. And if it's at the bottom center here, now you see it's over here, then it has to be top center. Whew. Phew. So early in the morning, my brain is getting wrecked. Good. So you have a very good idea of how this works. I'm going to uncheck 
the fixed position and I'm going to bring it back to this place over here, our opening hours. Now I'm going to show you the other strength behind this drop bar. It was again something that when I first used it, I thought, ah, where am I going to be using this? But when I did it the first time, I came up with more and more and more ideas. So what if I want to have maybe people sign up for a newsletter? And I look at this page of mine and I just think, ah, this is such a beautiful page. Why, why go and ruin it with a contact form? So what I'm going to do is I want to create this with a contact form. But how are you going to add a contact form here in the contact type? And let me show you that. But let's do a little bit of styling first and layout. I'm going to grab an inner section, which is actually just nothing but columns. And then I'm going to click on this one and drag it into here. Click on it and then move it to the right. Duplicate it and then drag it here into the right and then align it to the left. And this one is going to be my contact form. So the first thing I want to do is say contact form. And how do we bring in our contact form? For this, you need to know how to make a template in Elementor. So what I have done is I have created a very simple contact form in Elementor. And now you go down here to where it says content and you click over here where it says template. Choose template, select, and you will see contact form. And I click on that. So you have to know, go to Elementor, my templates, add new, and then you create your template in it. And now you will see when I hover over it, I get a contact form. Wow, right? And this form works really, really well. And I think the best way to see how it works is to go to the front end so that you can see that it actually works well. And now it just has to update and it gives us the contact form. And from here, you can go in and you can do all of those normal things and send it. It works 100% just like a contact form. Let's have a look at a few other templates I've made and see whether they can work as well. Click on the contact form. I added a map here. So for example, let's say you don't want a map down here at the bottom. Will that work? It does work. So even for a map section, you can have a map here and people can then access the map through that. And again, you may leave it on the page like this, but you may not want to do it. You want people to, you want to save space or you want it to look a specific way, or you just maybe want it to look interesting. And I added one more sign up. Let's see how the sign up one works. Sign up there. Okay, this is not sign up. This is actually, let's update it and go look, on, look at it on the front end. This is a Facebook widget. Yeah. So after it updates, and this is for Crocoblock, and you hover over it, Facebook appears here. You can have a look at the feed from Crocoblock there on Facebook at this moment, and you can even click here, and it will take you. Very nice. I have to admit, I had my reservations. I really doubted this widget at the beginning. But when I was sitting there and creating the templates, I just thought, what else? What other widgets do we have here? Let me test them all. And especially when I came to the Facebook one, you know, I, of course, we always leave it here, usually in, this, in the sidebar or we leave it here in the footer. But I just thought this is such a nice way because the contact form brings open a page. It's like a pop-up, a pop-up connected to a form. And it just allows you even to put in clickable links and external links. Very nice. So my reservations have been debunked. I'm very happy with this drop bar. Again, it's just a different way of styling your website. It's maybe a way of saving space or making things look not so crowded or to keep things looking cohesive. Sometimes when you do work with a website, you have a specific style, a specific layout that you are working with, and it looks really good. And then you come and you add some kind of information and everything looks just so ugly. And that is the kind of thing that if you are working with a client, you can go and hide it in the drop bar. And then you tell the client, oh, this is the latest thing. Yes, it speeds up your, your site tremendously. You better put it in the drop bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding because, you know, um, I, I, yes, 
client frustrations can be one of those things. But there we go. I hope this was useful. I hope it gave you some ideas. And I'm pretty sure you may be after this thinking to yourself one of two things. No, total rubbish. Never going to do that. Or you're going to be thinking, hmm, that opens new avenues for me as well. Well, and I'd be interested if you guys do something with it, please let me know below. It's always something that you may you may figure out something I haven't had. And then in the future, it would be very nice when I do an update to this video to include that. Right. Have a good day. And I'm going to finish this cup of coffee now with a bang. This is JP here. Have a nice day from Websites for Beginners.